my pleasure to welcome our uh, guests, which I'm going to introduce you for uh, Parabeton, uh, from my left, uh, the director, uh, Hans Hemingold, and uh, uh, cinematographer, or co-cinematographer and editor of the film, uh, Till Beckman. For Late and Deep, the director, uh, David Horan. For uh, Sean Chi, directed by Amit Dutta, who is unfortunately not here with us, we have the sound designer and co-producer Ait Singh Ratori. And maybe Aliona, you want to introduce our guest on the far side. And for short film and competition is Tokyo, from Tokyo, producer Artem Vasiliev and director Alexei German Jr. As usual, uh, we'd like to have uh, your questions, of course, for our guests. Uh, otherwise, we started with a couple of questions here from, uh, from us. Uh, maybe we want to follow the order of projection, so we want to start with... Uh, as you prefer. Uh, as I believe with translators, I will pick in Italian. Uh, the translation will be in English, and then I will translate from Russian the answers of our guests. Dunque, innanzitutto porgo gli scusa agli altri registi della tavola perché con la organizzazione un po' caotica del festival uh, noi stessi consulenti ci perdiamo i film, insomma è tutto un nostro in translation in questa situazione purtroppo. Uh, seguendo l'ordine di uh, presentazione, uh, prima di tutto introduco presenti in sala Uh, il fior della, degli attori uh, russi, eh, quindi in ordine di apparizione, uh, in ordine di apparizione Ksenia Kutepova, Merak Nimizia <applausi> e Chupan Kamatova. E quindi io vorrei cominciare con uh, le domande. Uh, un po' sconvolgere fin dall'inizio uh, la conferenza perché uh, la domanda è al regista ma contemporaneamente anche agli attori uh, questa coppia c'è cioè Panca Matova e Merak è uh, la terza volta che fanno marito e moglie al cinema e la seconda volta che fanno marito e moglie nel film di Rexia German Junior erano la uh, meravigliosa coppia del film del Leone d'Argento di qualche anno fa la mostra del Paper Soldier sono una di carta e quindi volevo chiedere a Alexei se sono, stanno diventando i suoi attori fetici e se a questi attori fetici aggiungerà adesso anche Xenia Cotepova e magari se i nostri attori vogliono approfittare per fare qualche commento. Sia perduta. 
e solo loro ci sono rimasti e quindi io sfrutto il meglio riassumendo così e, e questo infatti eh, ricollegandosi al film che ha vinto eh, Leone d'Argento eh, il problema dei legami familiari tra marito e moglie eh, sono curiosi perché anche nel Leone d'Argento eh, Merab si trovava in un certo momento nell'aldilà nel Uh, parlando con i genitori, qua parla con la moglie, volevo chiedere a Merà perché il regista lo mette sempre a fare un viaggio in un, paese, in un posto così strano, come si trova a parlare con, uh, con degli spettri. Adesso io traduco in russo la domanda perché non, non l'ho avvertito di prendere le cuffie. La prosco Merà, Уже второй раз вы подповедете с фильмом Германа, и уже второй раз он обязательно вас отправляет вот туда, куда-то с призраками разговаривать. Сначала с родителями, теперь с женой. Как вы себя ощущаете в том мире? Вот вы задумывались как-то, что, что для вас это лично значит? Вы как-то видите, как вы задаете вопрос Стюардессе, у вас это бывало? Вот я вам поворачиваю этот вопрос, у вас это бывало? Лично я не, не общаюсь с призраками так часто, как, как мои персонажи из фильма Алексея. А, а, а тот шанс, который дает кино, чтобы сыграть такую сцену или, или а, а, быть персонажем, который общается с духами и с мертвыми, это на самом деле очень интересно. И, и думаю, что у нас это получилось уже второй раз. Очень убедительно все. И а, а работа с, с этими людьми, которые вокруг, а, просто было огромное удовольствие и, и сейчас очень. E io gli ho girato la domanda che lui fa alla hostess nel film, ti è mai successo di parlare con, con gli spettri, insomma, con, con i cari che non ci sono più? E, no, nella vita non lo faccio spesso, ma mh, al cinema sì, effettivamente la seconda volta che lo faccio è sempre questo regista a mettermi in questa cognizione, è molto interessante poi uh, soprattutto parlare con... Uh, lavorare recitando con questi attori adesso che si è aggiunto anche Xenia mi sono trovata meravigliosamente bene a recitare in questo film per quanto è corto è stato molto intenso uh, I would like to move on with a question for Devin Horan concerning Late and Deep and um, I think what struck us and I guess struck also the audience about your work is the almost pictorial quality of the image. I would like to ask you how you um, reach that effect. I mean, how much is done on, on, on the set when you're shooting, how much is on camera, and how much is the result of the post-production you're doing later on? Um, I'd say a, a huge, the, the majority of it is done in, uh, in the post-production process. Um, You know, I have no training as a cameraman, so I've been uh, just learning as I as I, as I shoot, and um, I uh, wasn't able to really figure out how to uh, achieve this uh, this heavy shadow, this uh, this deep shadow, and this chiaroscuro effect uh, through uh, more formal types of lighting. So it it, it came about uh, through really heavy uh, reworking of the image in the in the grading process. And also your previous work, uh, which I saw, is con basically concerned with uh, bodies and landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, do you comment on this uh, is it, uh, temporary interest, or is this really a basic uh, kind of obsession on your work, this connection? Uh, no, I think I'm ready to move on as a temporary interest, but uh, I guess it began with uh, just wanting to create this kind of di dilation between uh, between the, uh, the opaque body and the flesh and then this, these open expanses. And have this sort of oscillation between these, uh, these remote, expansive places and then the, the either intimacy or suffocation of the, uh, of the interiors. And 
the, from the dark of uh, late and deep, let's move to the sunlight, the amazing sunlight of uh, the architecture um, we see in uh, Parabeton, which you um, shot. And uh, uh, maybe just to start uh, talking about the film, I think it's useful to frame it in your ongoing research on, um, on architecture. This film is part of a series, it's a 19th chapter, but it's also the third part of a new series. Well, it's integrated in a long series about uh, <laughs> modern architecture. And there will be three films about the decampment of modernism, and that means the rise and the fall of modernism. And so, um, referring to the beautiful light, well, it's actually Italian light being filmed here in May, and you can't uh, top that. And, uh, well, it's a long series, and it's coming to an end now with two films about Piero Ginevri. The film is not really done. It's uh, 100 minutes long. This is a work in progress, what you saw today. And there will be another one about Auguste Perret, the uh, French uh, master builder with uh, reinforced concrete. And uh, your interest for Nervi was part of the original project or something that uh, has been uh, developed uh, through working on other architecture and other no, styles? Actually, when I started the series, that was in 1993. I had a list of architects and actually Nervi was on it. But, uh, you know, it takes such a long time to uh, raise the funding for a film, so he became the last one or the second to last one, and I, I'm glad I could do it. And uh, I guess, of course, the choice of the Nervi architecture you filmed uh, is based on the researches of. Uh, this track is a record of uh, buildings, but then I was interested in how you choose the ancient architectures because that's more related to your own, I think, uh, uh, view of how they could relate to the Nervi building. Yeah, it's very interesting. The, the Romans invented uh, concrete 100 years before Christ. Uh, Adrian, the um, Roman emperor, and uh, Kaiser was, Caesar was actually the inventor and the first master builder of uh, concrete. So it, uh, it's of course uh, evident, or one should put it into relation what these master builders of reinforced concrete, and actually uh, Yellow Ginevri is one of the greatest of them. Uh, uh, and it's just the edit that makes you feel that it's the same place. And uh, uh, in that final uh, building we visit with the film, uh, it seems that Amiduta is very much interested in showing us these uh, European views, uh, these uh, Western pictures of uh, old gardens yeah. and, and buildings. Uh, in that, uh, in that uh, building with, which, which we see in the end of the film, uh, uh, he saw a few paintings which are uh, made by some Indian laborers, uh, I think at least two or three hundred years ago. And, uh, the film basically is about the expression of a person. Uh, it's about uh, his personality, uh, dimensions of the personality. So two actors in the film are not two. They are actually two personalities, two dimensions of, uh, of a human being. And uh, 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 they are actually looking for a medium to transcend from, uh, from the human form. So in the end, they, they go on searching for aircraft, but they end up in this room where they find the paintings. So it's not actually the aircraft, but it's the paintings, which is a medium for a human being to transcend. So it's very personal expressions. That is the reason the paintings automatically come in the film. And uh, uh, nobody, I don't know if people noticed it, but uh, the conclusion of the film comes in the end, wherein, the, uh, wherein there are two shadows which talks to each other. And uh, what they talk about is that there is someone who controls their lives. There is, there is a group of at least 50 people who control their lives. So uh, even to express yourself freely, to be in your purest form as a human being, uh, it is tough and it's being controlled by someone. So uh, I think that's where the reference from the West comes in, in the paintings, just opposed with the Indian paintings. Any questions from the audience? Thank you. 
about the paintings and about the last sequence of the movie that this European war uh, motif uh, appears a lot. Of these are originally painted in, in that building. Yeah. Is it like that? No. It's, uh, you, used, uh, you used uh, these images uh, to, from... Um, from the walls. From the walls, but they are originally in that building. Yes. Uh, do they have any any, any I meaning? think, yeah, even I had this question to Amit when I saw the film for the first time. And I asked them, who made these paintings here? in this so remote area of India. So he said during the British uh, rule in India, uh, there might be some postcards which would come oh, from the UK. Okay. And these labors, they found these postcards and they made these paintings. So yeah, it was an amazing blend of, of uh, uh, original Indian paintings. And, uh, yeah, and it's, it's there in the same uh, building. Thank you. Question to Devon Horan. You mentioned in the catalogue um, Sadek Hedayat and your, well, your but your influence are inspired by Hedayat. Could you please elucidate that a bit? Thank you. Uh, well, I guess he's just, he's representative of a lot of uh, literature from that period, and it's the uh, early part of the 20th century, existential type thinking. Um, are, you, are you familiar with his work? Yes, yes. Uh, just as a sort of uh, orientation for the uh, states of extremity that I'm trying to convey, is uh, he's been both an in, in influence and uh, I mean, that, that quote, I just feel, is a, is a very uh, help, helpful guiding principle for trying to explore these more ex, ex, uh, obscure experiences and obscure states that, uh, that are being shown. But, uh, Question about uh, uh, parabeton. Um, how much uh, you are interested in the also in the state of decay of these uh, places? Because uh, I mean, as a, an Italian myself, I'm pretty concerned about by seeing, uh, which is the state of many of the um, nervi architecture, and how much this was an element uh, you also want to uh, point at in the film, or it's just uh, there, but it's really not what you are interested in the actual function and the actual state of this? Uh... Well, I take it like it is, and we can't avoid showing it like it is, because film is about surfaces and not about what you want it to be or what, what it once was. So and that's a very nice thing, we work with surfaces. And then, of course, it shows what, uh, what it me means that people, how they care about buildings or how they don't care about buildings. And uh, we never arrange something. We go there, it's documentary, and we like to film like it is. If it's chaos, it's chaos. If it's nicely put, it's nicely put. And so it's a record. That's why I put this date into the film. It's in May 2011. Then you can see, or you will see in further years, how something looked on that day. That's really important, but it's not a political statement in, in terms of now I go into decay and show how, you know, how decayed it is. It is like it is, but I'm very surprised that the Italians don't care much about Navi, so uh, maybe it's their problem, um, but I do care about him, as you might have seen in the film. And the, the final um, version of the film, which you are, I guess you are editing uh, in the moment, is all, everything is shot, if I'm not wrong? Or? Everything is shot, everything is edited already, it's 100 minutes long, we just work on the sound, it's in a very elaborate sound work, as you might have so the sound, final sound mix will be in the beginning of November and then the film will be done. Everything is shot, yes. And uh, is there in the material we haven't seen yet uh, uh, 
um, are you addressing or working on other formal aspects of NERVI architecture that are not, let's say, represented by the chapters we have seen in this version? Uh, yes, it's interesting that every building has new tasks, uh, has a new uh, composition of uh, parts, and uh, you will see from building to building he develops. I mean, this is something that's not really in this short film. I use a chronological order of this building, so you can see from building to building how he develops and what he develops into. So the papal audience hall that you saw at the end here might not be his best building, it's uh, very impressive, but uh, as a kind of fan of Manby, I wouldn't say it's the uh, most, uh, it's the richest, it's the, of course, because it's the Vatican, but it's interesting that at the end of his life he turned into this representative style. But on his way in the 30s and the 40s he did this amazing invention, inventions in uh, reinforced concrete and you will see it in, very, uh, in buildings that are not used anymore as you saw some of them now. This film already or you saw this little warehouse in Rome where he actually ex did experimentation and uh, was building small buildings out of reinforcing even this boat he built for the uh, Egyptian uh, fishermen out of uh, concrete and it's a very interesting uh, uh, he's, a, he's a civil engineer and he actually despised to a certain degree architecture because as I said that he was convinced that architectures care too much for facades. He was very much into the construction and uh, of, of things, and that's what we see in the film. You want to add something? Maybe we want to go back to Tokyo? No, just uh, was wondering that uh, there was any, uh, as I know, uh, he has like uh, Alexei German Jr. And I was thinking now about this fear of fly and why this film uh, and about Tokyo and I can understand but why it's place it all in the plane is just in this one. Mm -hmm. Странно, странно обсуждать. А, не знаю, потому что в этом фильме мог быть, наверное, так он написался, мог быть только самолет, только такой большой самолет, а, только пустой самолет. И а, для меня я не хочу, я не хочу рассказывать о uh, I will translate. So, I, yes, I'm, I'm afraid of flying, but uh, in this film, only a plane could exist to my mind. The only big plane, only big empty plane. It just came out of me as a concept, and that's it. I have done a few feature, full length features, and you know, full, full, full feature films and short films are completely different things. and the senses. Something like that. And uh, staying with the subject of flying, a question about uh, uh, Sanchini. Where does the inspiration for all these uh, uh, flying machines, this building, these noises that we hear in the soundtrack, uh, uh, where found uh, Amit Tuta this idea to pair this uh, modern uh, reference of 19 technology of flying with these uh, old places and old uh, 
uh, cultural um, elements in the film? Uh, I think this question better asked to Amit, but I will try and answer. Um, see, to make a movie, you have a technology which you use. But your expression is not uh, related to the technology directly. For example, um, 2000 years ago people were still making paintings uh, with maybe just a pencil and a few more uh, equipment made of rock. Uh, they could express themselves without the technology, with the medieval technology. Now if you see, uh, your life is uh, so much involved, governed by the internet, computers, vehicles, airplanes, aircrafts, uh, but you still have the expression which was uh, same in uh, 2000 BC. Uh, so I think that's how it comes up. Uh, and uh, these films which Amit has been making from last uh, few years, this is part of uh, a novel which he has written. So this is uh, uh, part of a novel which is called The Mad Engineer. And this film is actually just an excerpt out of that uh, novel. Uh, as far as sound is concerned, uh, uh, we do not really get down to sound before the shooting is done. Though it seems at times that uh, it's pre-planned and uh, it's really thought of before the shooting started, it, it, uh, but it never uh, happens like that. Uh, the one thing which we take care of while designing the sound is uh, uh, the rhythm, not the meaning of the sound. I mean, uh, in a shot where you can have a sound uh, put on a particular image may not give you a direct meaning, but if you see it as a whole in, a, in, a, in one film and maybe in the body of work, uh, in the body of work of the directors, then it could make some meaning. For example, in this film, if you uh, heard there is a lady crying in the beginning, but that do not have a direct uh, meaning in the film. But if you see as a whole, in the, as a part of the mezzanine, uh, keeps you in the films, uh, keeps you right in the film. Uh, so rhythm is the one thing which we look for, no special meaning. But of course not out of the context, not out of the context. Okay, I would say that, uh, Aliona, if you agree, if there are no further questions. Ah, no, there's one. Thank you. Uh, I have a question to Alexei German. Uh, Alexei, uh, in Russian, okay? Алексей, скажите, пожалуйста, вот вы не хотите да, раскрывать концепцию, а как возникла вообще вот эта идея? Можете рассказать, как впервые пришло? Can you translate by yourself your question, please? No, if you could, can please summarize the question also in English, because we didn't get a translation here. If you, if you can, please. Okay, so I ask uh, asked about uh, uh, how uh, the idea of film uh, was born. Ну, собственно говоря, это наш совместный проект с достаточно большой мировой компанией Пионовика. Произошел он, родился он, в общем, случайно, с одной стороны, с другой стороны, абсолютно не случайно. Потому что, с одной стороны, в нас зрело желание высказаться и сказать о тех вещах, которых мы сказали в фильме, а с другой стороны, возможность у нас родилась на нашей совместной встрече, когда вот мы встречались с Ольгой Касаткиной, как раз которая все здесь. Мы говорим абсолютно о другом сначала. И мы с женой, мы с женой предложили, а, а, мы как-то это вместе родилось, не то, что кто-то предлагал, да? мы как-то вдруг вместе втроем договорились для того, что, возможно, может попробовать снять фильм о том, что для всех важно, и который бы а, говоря о каких-то общечеловеческих вещах. Вот так вот эта вся история, все как бы история родилась. Я думаю, что это первое сочетание в России, одно из первых сочетаний в России э, проектов, которые, совместных проектов, которые поддерживаются крупнейшей международной компанией, 
и э, наши кинематографисты да, вот такого, такого рода, которые вышли, которые вышли в мир и представлены, э, представлены, соответственно, в Венеции. Поэтому это как ну, наш совместный какой-то такой ребенок, такой удивительным образом вырос. Уже маленький, маленький кадр. So shortly, uh, shortly saying that in some sense it was um, committed by a big, uh, big company uh, that I immediately thought about, Pernolica, uh, mm -hmm. so, and um, they, um, they has, uh, they, um, Alexei German and his wife um, have some idea about uh, something about uh, general human values. And uh, Pernod Ricard has an idea to invest in cinema, and um, some, somebody from Pernod Ricard is here, so kind of a co-producer in this set. And uh, so uh, the idea of this film is the idea of my film, that uh, as, a, as a real film of Alexei German, uh, but the most important thing in this case is that uh, this is the first uh, First example of collaboration. Uh, this film was realized absolutely without financing of the state money, even if it's a short film. And so it's the first uh, example of collaboration that some uh, big company can invest in small art house film. Uh, we all hope that maybe a, um, a big uh, international company, not Russian, it's a big international brand, Pernolica. Uh, no? And this, um, so in the world it was realized before, but in Russia nobody has uh, done it before. So uh, we all hope that maybe Alexei German Jr. will find the financing for his uh, next uh, long future. But, and I, I would like to guarantee him some big face like he is really uh, happy to be in Venice with this one. Okay, I thank you uh, all, but most of all I thank our guests here at the table, and uh, they will be uh, here in the afternoon, I guess also tomorrow, most of them, so if you have a, a request for interviews, you can just uh, uh, ask. Thank you, and thank you.